This is Shraddha and this is my new channel. It is called Early Learners and Right Brainers. I am a new mom. I am a working mom. Currently a senior support analyst for a French bank. As well as um, I have completed a lot of um, child psychology, neuroplasticity and neuroscience courses. And I have been researching a lot on the right brain training side. So being a good follower of Hey Guru, uh, Sishida, then Glenn Dorman Methods. Uh, I have started this group and the Instagram and my website and the YouTube just, just for the purpose of creating a lot of awareness. Because once I got to know about Hey Guru, they say that you should be very much passionate when it comes to education. So the best thing is to write what you know and then I know that it is good that I put a face on what I'm writing. This is my first video and I'm very sorry, I'm being very casual. Uh, I need to set up a good uh, background and a good dress and everything. But then uh, I don't really find much time because my baby is also very active and because he's a right brain a mother's baby he is always constantly asking for more and more videos um, not videos sorry more and more activities so my tentative day with my child starts with him getting up at 8 30 or 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 9 30 he doesn't have a very definite um, sleep routine like uh, from the starting months he is more of an active baby at the night time and a sleeping baby in the morning time i tried a lot of activity i tried a lot of um, techniques by which i can tune in his sleep but then i realized that um, i should accept the way his sleep pattern is and when i started accepting it and i started um, giving him the five minutes suggestion that you know you are getting up at your uh, perfect time and you are happy and you will get up on your own he started getting up at around eight o'clock eight thirty on his own and uh, first thing is he he'll smile and he'll be very happy once he gets up so my tentative day with him starts with uh, greeting him uh, i have decided to choose a spiritual way of saying him good morning so i say hari krishna and then i say good morning Kiyanj. then i tell him that today is monday today is 23rd of april like that sorry today is 23rd april but today is a friday so today is 23rd april it is a friday let me just start saying the way I tell him. Uh, Hare Krishna Kiyan, good morning. Today is 23rd of April. It is a Friday. Fun Friday. You are happy? Yes, you are. Are you smiling? Yes, you are. Are you being intelligent? Yes, you are. And then we start our uh, bath and our massage and lots of love, kissing and cuddles are there. And hugging is like a next skin to him because it's very important to have a skin to skin contact with the baby. Even if you're a working mom or you're a stay home mom. Because you know what I feel? A stay home mom or a working mom has to be available to the child maybe at least for one or two hours. The rest of the time she might be working. She might be cooking, she might be busy, or whatever. You don't have to feel guilty about it. You should have a strong team who supports you. In my case, um, I have a family who tries to support him. But the baby always wants his mom's. Um, wants his mom. So, I have to manage my work and his schedule. So, I go with the way he is. Like, my routine is baby lit. Like, I don't impose my routine on him. So, whenever he's up, I have decided that I'll do these four things. So, it doesn't matter when he gets up. It's it's okay. 
so when i get up when he gets up the first thing is to greet him then when he settles down like when he has a bath and everything then i have already decided like for monday or for friday what kind of activity i have to give to him and what kind of toy i have to give to him so i i have mainly eight specific toys uh, for zero to three months the best toy is flashcards black and white flashcards they are the best so for flashcards i have a small book that i show to him then they are black and white pictures then i show to him some few um, picture cards and a word card and then dot card so this is one pattern then um i will give him a rattle like when he was three or three months old like zero to three i used to give him rattle i'll shake it from here and there and then um shake it and then he'll be like excited and happy like okay wow um i could see the happiness on his eyes in his eyes then it would be some music like i used to make him listen to rain rain go away then um, spider spider or all the small small nursery rhymes first on youtube and then on my own i used to sing for him whenever i used to play on youtube i never used to show in the screen the phone used to be hidden somewhere and only the speaker used to be there so he could only listen but then i could see that he is excited when i play the music so i started to dance so that become second activity for us like we used to do the flash cards then we used to dance and i used to sing for him i used to dance for him like that then um there are uh, there were clothes books that i have cloth books are very much um easier to present to a child who is very small then we had this flap book um uh, which is where is the baby's belly button that book he has used for like 9 months and now it is all torn because however i try to uh, not show him he used to always be like i want it in my hand so uh, that kind of a book is also very good for your child and um, so hide and seek books then cloth books then um, face books like the book that have a lot of pictures of a baby or or of an animal are good for the baby then comes 6 to 9 months that time i had introduced him the actual maths program then the re- uh, then the learning reading program then um, flash cards and and then i started showing him the blocks like the puzzles the tangrams those activities are really very good uh, because he is very small i can't expect him to do it so i i draw the puzzles and i show him that this is this this is this this is this and all these activities are not repeated every day every day everything is new there is nothing that is same on every day because the toys if you keep them showing every day the same 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 toys he will get bored of it so best is like monday you show him a bat tuesday you show him a ball wednesday you show him bat bat and ball you have to be innovative like what you make a bat you can use it as a as something to dance you can use it as as a mic you can use it as to play a cricket match you can use it to bang something so a same toy can be used in different way that should be a creative thing for you so the toy section is related to the self play of a child then the second is the flash cards the third is that you have to specifically invest some amount of time to listen to music fourth should be you should invest some time so that the child learns how to make music there is a difference between listening and there is a difference between making so you should help him to make some sounds like you can also give him some um, normal uh, vessels that are at home and he can start making noise out of it then it is very important that you introduce your child to some higher energy it could be jijis it could be allah it could be uh, ganpati kali anyone 
but there always should be a belief that you know along with your parents there's a supernatural power nature always protecting you because when you were in the womb you were protected by your mother but who was protecting you it was the mother nature so the nature has taken care of you and the nature is always going to take care of you so it is important that you develop a spiritual habit to your child be it 5 minutes of meditation or be it any um uh, bowl meditation or be it any shloka med- meditation be it anything but make sure that your child understands that you know he has to sit quiet and has to connect to the higher power and uh, like there is a language between two people or uh, english hindi marathi and any other language there is a language between you and the nature and the language is silence you have to sit in silence and you have to meditate you have to calm your mind you have to listen to a peaceful piece of sound that is understood between you and the nature the child has to understand this and it it is best if you do it he will understand uh, for zero to one year baby i think everything that you do is what matters because after that i am sure it's going to be them for making us crazy in a good way but then this is how it is mm, coming back to another point um flash cards now why right brain people are always talking about flash cards uh flash cards means you have to flash things very fast see uh, there are two types of brains and we all know we have all read that you know there's a left brain there's a right brain the left brain is logical the right brain is creative the left brain has less space the right brain has more space the left brain takes a lot of time the right brain is very easy to train so when you show anything very fast you just remember it nicely example if you watch a serial a tv serial or a movie you will always remember it if you read the script you won't remember it but if you see the script which is the tv you will always remember you know earlier when uh, tvs were just gener- uh, just invented how they used to show that uh the screening they used to just flash everything at a very high speed so human brain has a capacity to capture everything in pictures and save it in the mind the human brain is 300 tb capacity 300 tb or even more i think so i think so even more so tb memory is is too much like you can save i think thousands of computers in your mind so one computer is able to do so much just imagine how much a human brain can do so that is the reason flash cards were invented in 1890 not now glenn domain just the research forward glenn domain is the pioneer of flash card technique but so glenn domain is the pioneer of flash cards he was the first person who helped the brain injured child to gain a memory of a normal child so when those techniques were applied on normal children they became extraordinary but the flash card concept was gen- uh, was invented in 1870 almost but before that i would just like to say that anything that you can explain your child with a high speed is nothing but right brain training so you know imagine you are in a room and you tell your child to look at 15 things 15 things in one second like this is a tv this is a ac this is a tube light this is a cupboard this is this is a picture this activity if you keep on doing maybe once twice thrice he will just grasp it now that is right brain so uh, when the child goes in school he has to learn everything step by step and it takes time and this is the left brain training which he has to go which he has to go through but we want to increase the capacity of a human brain 
why do we want to do that because uh, like like you want to train your muscles to become fit in the same way when you train your brain in the pioneer ages like from zero to three years the brain wants to build its own muscle and it can be only done when you expose your child to a lot of information it could be anything it could be flashcards it, it could be seeing things in fast speed it can be exposing him or her to music it could be taking them to a park and showing everything at a fast speed anything but the idea is to make the bonds make the neurons connection stronger because you know when you make that the link stronger when they grow up for them remembering them things grasping things is not difficult uh, we have always seen that people don't have interest for learning the reason is human brain is developed or human brain is meant to learn things or to learn the skill of learning only between 0 to 3 years maximum till 7 years after that they just tend not to show any interest i mean the the cells that show interest are available only for 0 to 7 if you don't use it they are lost and if once they are lost you can always train your child but the the capacity that the brain already had it is lost so you will think that you and me are still capable of doing so many things because there is something called as neuroplasticity in neuroplasticity your brain has already has already trillions of neurons that are developed but you can change their composition you can you can do some things differently and can reprogram your brain but the neurons that are lost in the crucial years of our life can never brought back imagine if with those small amount of neurons if you, today you are successful just imagine how successful you could have been if you were exposed to the things that we are going to expose our child to i'm not saying that our previous generation did not pay attention they were just not aware of these things and the japanese people have come out with this invention at heigru and uh, sichida they have created this right brain schools they are just for the infants like babies born from 0 to 6 years can enroll there and once once the right brain training is done they are again allowed to go to the left brain educational systems why because they have researched that you know when you give lot of information to babies they actually become very smart Fra- to reframe it the child is already born genius if you pay attention then they remain genius if you don't pay attention they become ordinary this is the only thing so and one more reason of right brain education is that these children they become very intuitive like they just have good intent intuition power and then they can really become a good decision maker and you know if you if you think about your own life you have many regrets like you could have done this better way you could have done that better way because you know the thinking capacity of a human brain decreases as they grow when you were a child like when you were in a womb the brain weight was 70% the first thing that was created was heart but then after your third month or fourth month the brain started getting its capacity so the brain's weight that time was 30% of the body weight then when the baby came out it was 15% then when the baby became one year it was 10% then again it was like 5% and by the age of i think 5 or 10 it it becomes just 3% and now if you just see the body weight like we human beings the our body weight is so much but our brain weight is very less so brain decreases by age if you don't train it in a proper way we are just going to lose lot lot of information we are just going to lose lot of neurons so this is the way i want people to understand that right brain education the definitions can be found on google 
mean there are plenty of blogs and everywhere even in my blog but then the simple way to understand this is the more information the more input you provide your brain the better it is because then it is able to grasp things better in future like for example if you explain your child that french is this language and you provide him some few words of french when he grows up he will definitely remember that okay when i was a child my mom had or my father had taught me this particular word and they are going to remember it now how they will remember it it is your brain that does the work like you cannot explain how the brain is doing it it is just doing it like you cannot explain how the heart beats the same way you cannot explain how your brain is going to process but you have to believe that it process so whether this is a education or whether this is like a school the right brain training it's not like that i attended a hegru seminar and there they mentioned a very nice line that this all stimulus that we are giving is not education it is just we are helping them in a playful way that you know you are not a baby you are a genius so we are just taping their energies and we are just taping their abilities and we are just being proactive and we are just being helpful that okay when they go in their life school life school where they experience a lot of oh, i won't say hatred but then a lot of racism is there a lot of social issues are there they should be empathetic people they should think from their heart this is what the hegru people say that they should think from their heart if they think from their heart they are capable of empathizing other people then they will be a good human beings so we are in a journey of making good human beings and we are not here to make them super genius in terms of studies i am not sure what my child is going to turn out when he goes in school but i am definitely sure that he will be he will become a good person which i think a normal education person might not be but he will be very much empathetic he'll have emotions because his right brain is channelized in a proper way and that's why his left brain is going to get wired to the right brain properly you know hegru domain and uh, shichida and other people who have invented or researched on this maybe they know only five things there could be another 20 things that can help your right brain to develop human beings are always exploring so right now we have only 12 activities the first is the speed play that is the flash cards then sensory play then memory play then uh, uh, speed reading then music therapy then um, linking memory peg memory all these things are there please don't think that memory means uh, mugging up you know to mug up also you need skills you just can't mug up anything we when we when we show flash cards it is our duty to show the real things as well it's not like you just show the flash cards and the work is done flash cards is just to provide a gymming exercise for the brain it is just like that you have to show the natural things as well the original things as well but flash cards give increased photo memory for your child so that the grasping power increases so it's not bad to increase the memory power of a child the capacity because everybody is born with memory it is just to increase the capacity oh uh, yeah i just remember one thing a small girl was asked in hegru that uh, why do you think uh, right brain education is important or why do you think what has it benefited you she said that because of hegru i was i was in the hegru school from 0 to 4 years of my life then now i'm 4 and a half years and when my actual school has started i'm able to study like for example if the study is of 2 hours i'm able to do it in 40 minutes and then the remaining time i'm helping my mom i am doing some exercises 
I am doing uh, painting, I am doing dance and I am going for sports. Now tell me, in Indian education system, we engineers or we doctors, there were, the, the studies used to be heavy or maybe our brain capacity was not so much that we could finish off the entire syllabus in two hours. We were not able to do that. We used to always spend like five hours, ten hours, twelve hours just to memorize things which are easily available now on Google. So the thing that we were doing ten years back is now easily available on Google. So there's no point saying that, you know, uh, we don't want to increase the memory capacity. Why should we do this to our children? Let them be children. Let them play. Of course, you have to make them play. There is something called as self-play. There is something called as free play. But sparing 20 minutes just to increase the memory capacity so that when the child goes in school or college, they don't have to waste their entire day studying. They can do extracurricular activities. They can play. They can follow their passion. In India or Asian countries, there are so many children who have sacrificed their passion for studying because they never had time. But when you do a right brain training, you get immense time for your studies and for extracurricular curricular activities. This is what that small girl, girl told in her Hegru live session that um, because of Hegru classes, I was able to complete my um, activities and my school homework in 20 minutes and the remaining hour I was playing. Can you ask our children to do that? No, because to make them sit at one place is a big task. Why? Because they are they were never introduced what is studies. Now we are trying to tell our child that oh, this is apple, this is banana, this is car at the age of zero month, three month, two month. So when they become when they go in junior kg, senior kg, they have automatically learned the skill of learning. And we don't have to train them, we don't have to teach them. We have already taught them in a playful way. Now next video I'm going to show like how happy and how excited you should be when we when we do the flashcards. So I don't want to end this on a random note. Um, just to share some key notes like what schedule do we fo what schedule do we follow for right brain? First thing is we play some alpha music or instrumental music. It's always on. Uh, assuming that whenever the music is on, even if the child is doing some other work, his one of the section of his brain is always listening to that sound and it creates a lot of benefits for him uh, and also for us. Second, I show flashcards, picture, words and dot cards. Picture and Picture and dot cards can be... Picture cards cannot be really created at home. First few picture cards can be bought and then we can explore more and more once the baby grows. For dot cards also you can create some at home, you can, you can buy. But the word cards are definitely to be made at home. You can make as many as word cards you want to make. So these three things are there uh, that we do. Then we have storybooks which I read out to him. Then we have small, small handbooks which has a lot of information in it. And he listens to them with a lot of interest because we all, like whoever sits with the baby even for 10 minutes has to do one activity with them which is related to RB. So giving information from the book, giving information from the drawing, saying what the drawing is, telling some description about it in a fast, fast speed is what is followed at my home then then when his active time two is there he's allowed to allowed is the wrong word he we just tell him that you know you do whatever you want to do so earlier we used to have a play gym now he has grown out that play gym so earlier we used to tell him to be in the play gym and he used to be so happy but we used to never leave him alone we were always around so in play gym he will play he will uh, explore all the piano keynotes and everything so this was till the age of eight months now he is more interested in his uh, bat and ball and then there are block games there are stacking games so if so one day i give him the stacking toy and he will keep on 
playing with the stacking toy. The second day, I'll give him the. Okay. So that's all. I think it's better I stop now because um, it's already thirty minutes, and I think I have explained you many things. Uh, coming back to the schedule. Free play is important. The right brain is also important, and planning the activities before time is equally important. It's good that you should research, but don't waste so much of time that in the research you just don't do anything. Start anything. Start start even with one flashcard is okay. Start with one music that is okay. Start with one uh, toy it is okay. But to start is important. So start your right brain journey now. All the best.